Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Side Projects. This one is actually a suggestion that I made because I heard or I read about that the Warsaw Radio Mast, which is what today's video is about, was the tallest structure in the world and it fell over and I'd never really heard of it before. And I was like, that's insane. So let's, let's cover it, shall we? And this is what you're about to watch. Let's get into it. We talked before about how people in general love tall buildings. There's something viscerally satisfying about a structure that defies gravity hundreds of meters into the air. We've also talked about how politicians are very much aware of this fact and will leverage it to distract from the problems that they're supposed to be fixing. I think, look at this huge, amazing building I built. But what happens when that little plan goes wrong? This is the story of the Warsaw Radio Mast, the tallest building in the world, until very suddenly it wasn't. Our story begins in 1945, with the end of World War II. Germany had conquered basically every country in Eastern Europe for the duration of the war until the Soviet Union pushed them back and suddenly found themselves occupying those same countries. Now, ostensibly, the USSR had promised to respect their independence, but afterwards, Joseph Stalin, General Secretary of the Communist Party, was like, eh, what if I, uh, actually, you know, just don't do that? And, well, as you probably know, he installed a series of puppet governments that were allied to the Soviet Union. Bit of a jerk move, really. Flash forward around 30 years and Stalin's been dead for a while and it's becoming pretty clear to everyone involved that communism kind of sucks. One of the countries that was really down on it was Poland, which had sporadically protested against their communist government over various things ranging from economic downturn to repressive government policies. The communist government was concerned over this. If most of the people don't like them, I mean, how can they continue to be bad at their jobs? Now, if you dip your find yourself the leader of an authoritarian country where most people actively dislike you and your policies, and the only reason you get to stay in charge is because you have a really powerful friend next door, there's a tried and tested method to get those pesky protesters off of your back. And that's distract them with a giant building. The Warsaw Radio Mast was built over the course of four years, officially being completed on May the 18th, 1974. It was a triangular design of guide steel lattices, guy being short for guy wire, essentially a cable that attaches the structure to the ground so it doesn't fall over. We won't give you all of the exact specifications on this thing because the Wikipedia article for this dad took a page out of Julius Caesar's book and described every possible engineering fact in excruciating detail. So if you're just dying to know the stuff like how the guy wires were 50 millimeters in diameter, head over there and read about it. All the rest of you need to know is that the Warsaw Radio Mast was deliberately designed to be slightly taller than KVLY TV Mast, which was at the time the tallest structure in the world, and it was located in where else but North Dakota. The latter came in at 629 meters, that's 2,063 feet, while the former came in at 646 meters, or 2,120 feet. That was enough to knock America's radio mast into second place and allow Poland to officially claim it as the tallest structure in the world. Now, radio towers do kind of feel like cheating, but, I mean, <laughs> we don't make the rules. Like any fragile authoritarian government eager to distract from very obvious problems, the completion of the radio mast was met with fanfare and media attention and was slated to broadcast the propaganda of the successes. Because, I mean, why not? But one interesting side effect of the radio mast being so tall was that people from outside Poland could pick up the radio waves emanating from it, allowing, well, basically anyone to listen to Polish radio, even in Antarctica. Of course, you'd have to speak Polish to make it worthwhile, but still. And for 17 years, that was the way of things. Until one day in 1991, when it all came crashing down. Literally. At around 4 o'clock on August the 8th, 1991, a catastrophic failure occurred with the Warsaw radio mast, and all 646 meters of the structure proceeded to collapse to the ground below. Given that you can't just have the tallest structure in the world collapse without it being a bit of a downer on national pride, an investigation was immediately commissioned to determine what happened. As it turns out, a group of workers were in the process of replacing one of the guy wires because it had started to fray. They had detached it from the tower when the wind suddenly picked up, catching the structure while it was standing loose. The tower, being made of largely thin rods of metal, proceeded to easily sway around and, crucially, twist in the wind. This put a great deal of stress on the remaining guy wires, as well as the tower itself, and it proceeded to 
snap in half like a Kit Kat. The blame was put on the workers doing the renovation, and specifically the construction coordinator and the division chief of the company, who were sentenced to two and a half years in prison, although one later got their sentence reduced. Seems rather harsh for something that didn't have any human casualties, but like we said, you don't mess around when national pride is on the line. In fact, they were probably lucky the tower collapsed when it did because Poland was in the midst of getting rid of its authoritarian communist government. If it hadn't, their sentences probably would have been even worse. The government initially promised to rebuild the tower, but immediately ran into a problem in that local residents didn't want it rebuilt, citing radiation from the tower as a health hazard. And do you see everyone? It's not just today that people thought big towers were giving them cancer. Oh no! We've always been doing it this way. <laughs> anyway, there wasn't really anything the government could do because the protesters were backed by Solidarity, the powerful trade union which basically was responsible for ending communism in Poland. After a few more attempts to get the ball rolling, the government finally threw its hands up and said, eh, forget it, we don't need a giant tower, and they left it alone. Well, actually, they decided to build a much smaller tower nearby and bribe the local residents with a bunch of money not to protest about it. Smart move. And to this day, that's all there is to remember this tower by. The building and foundation are still around, but the site is unused and abandoned. It's become something of a tourist destination for people to pay respects to the loss of the former tallest building in the world, with one organization erecting a cross in front of the entrance. <laughs> May we all pay our respects. And I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please do hit that like button below. Don't forget to subscribe if you want more facts about Guy Wires. That's that Wikipedia page. And thank you for watching. Thank you.